Hey everyone, welcome to my first commentary video. In this video, I'll be going over some of my favorite torpedo fits, along with showcasing a few fights with each fit. For those not familiar with me, I've been solo PvPing for about three years. When I say solo, I mean solo. I've never used scouts, off-grid boosts, booster alts, or pro bolts. Everything that I do is done from whatever ship I'm in. I've always wanted to play EVE in a way that I think most people would consider casual. I wanted to show just how much a casual player could do without alts or billions in implants and modules. I think a lot of people are intimidated by all those who say you must have alts to be effective in solo PvP. I accepted that challenge and continued to fly with only one account and one main. I don't consider myself good at PvP, but at the minimum I'm efficient and get fun fights. And in the end, this is a game, so if I'm not having fun, then I'm not going to play. No, you won't be able to fight off an entire fleet in a Marauder or solo a carrier with how I play, but there is more PvP out there for battleships than just those kind of fights. I enjoy flying very unpredictable fits. I do not fly the meta, it's boring to me. I've never flown in uh, a Rapid Light Orthrus, a Kite Nomen, a Deimos, a Gila, or any other ship that is common in the meta. I like unpredictability. My first video I did, Experimental, was a culmination of a year or two of PvP fights with random fits I threw together. They are not fits that you would typically run across, but they worked w very well in the meta at the time, which favored a lot of frigates and T3 destroyers. As most of you know, I mainly fly battleships and battlecruisers. I feel larger ships provide more flexibility to survive in the meta. I know that sounds cra crazy to some, but it's how I've had the most success in brawling and surviving the blobs. As you have heavy newts, grapplers, micro jump drives, and large drone bays, which gives you a lot of options for escaping tackle and applying damage. So now that some of the introduction is out of the way, let's talk about battleships and torpedoes. Torpedoes have been overlooked for a while, with many quoting how poorly they apply or how they only apply to structures. It's true to an extent when you're not utilizing the bonuses or any of your available modules. It's like when you fit a drake with only a scram and then complain that your heavy assault missiles don't apply. That's not the fault of the weapon system, but the user. Same thing with torpedoes. If you go in with only a grappler and a scram or only a scram, you're going to have a bad time. The best way I would describe torpedoes is uh, they're, they're the missile equivalent to artillery. They use up a shit ton of fitting, both in CPU and somewhat in power grid. If you're solo with torpedoes, you will make sacrifices in your fit, most likely through tank. The offset in that loss of tank though is that you will have a weapon system that does not track, and as long as the target is grappled and scrammed, you will hit for a massive amount of damage. To get the most out of torpedoes, go in all in on application. So target painters, missile computers, application rigs, grappler, and then crash booster. Crash booster I'd say is mandatory on all the ships except maybe the Navy Raven, but even then, if you want a two-shot and afterburner fit Dramiel with torpedoes, then use Crash. The best ship to learn torpedoes on is the T1 Typhoon. It's about 100,000 EHP, 950 DPS, some utility, and it's cheap after insurance. The T1 Raven can do it as well, but I'll say it now, it has a very terrible tank. It might as well be a battlecruiser. And though it does get a little bit more damage as you can use three damage mods instead of two. The next battleships that I'd say are good with torpedoes are the Scorpion Navy issue, Typhoon Fleet issue, Raven Navy issue, and the Bar Guest. Yes, I said that. The Golem is also very good with torpedoes, uh, but I'll explain that a little bit further here in a moment. Starting with the Raven Navy issue, there is no other ship in the game that applies as well with torpedoes. Using my fit with standard crash, you get a 144 meter explosion radius, combined with a target painter, you are applying full damage to almost every cruiser in the game, and against frigates you're still applying decently at about 400 DPS in most cases. Against shield T3 destroyers or shield command destroyers, you'll be applying nearly full damage as well just because they'll have a larger SIG from the shield mods. With faction missiles, we're doing over 1000 DPS, Combined with five medium drones with rage torpedoes, you're doing about 1200 DPS. As you can see, my fit is whole fit, 
The main reason is because it has more tank than a shield fit. My original Navy Raven was shield fit, as seen in my earlier video of it, but after experimenting, I found that the whole tank is tankier and offers extra mids for application and a sensor booster. The sensor booster has proved to be invaluable, both for increasing scan resolution to engage faster, but also for countering jams and damps. With Navy Battleship sensor strength being so high, an ECCM scripted sensor booster helps increase sensor strength by a noticeable amount, in this case to about 65 points. The other benefit of the whole fit is that you gain double missile computers, which is actually better than one missile computer and one application rig, as you get bonuses for not only explosion radius, but velocity. This complements grappler brawling very well, as even if they get out of optimal, you'll still, you're still doing damage even near the edge of scram. The disadvantage of the Navy Raven is that it has no utility highs. Due to having to fit 8 torpedo launchers, or just 8 launchers in general, you have ship fitting because you have to fit those launchers, and cannot break some T3 cruisers as you have no way to apply nuke pressure. I think the Navy Raven could go the way of the Navy Drake and drop a launcher and add a damage bonus while removing the velocity bonus. It would free up fitting and give it a utility high and potentially give it a slight DPS bump. Something like a 5% damage bonus would be fine to keep it within its uh, approximately within the same damage it can do now. Uh, regardless though, even if they never were to make that change, it's still a great ship and one of the best with torpedoes. So now I'm going to show you a couple quick fights using this fit, showcasing the application of the torpedoes and the benefits of the sensor booster. This first fight starts off in Losec, fighting the Amar Faction Warfare. I baited them into a large plex by warping at 100 kilometers, and then they warped down at zero. Their cruisers started burning after me, leaving their Lodgy behind. This gave me time to apply damage to them without any worries about reps. For a large portion of the fight, the Blackbird and their group was trying to jam me, but because of my sensor booster, he was unable to get any successful jams in. Once their jams failed, then the whole gang just starts to fall apart, as they're outside their Lodgy range, and some ships are still separated, and then the ones that are actually nearby just aren't really doing any significant damage to me. The first Omen does try to bail out, but it's too late and he dies right as his large Lodgy starts to get in the fall off range. Once that omen uh, goes down, then I decide to try to micro jump drive as I'm feeling a bit crowded and was a little paranoid that the Blackbird would still get like a random jam in. However, right as I'm about to jump, this Dragoon kind of comes in here and scrams me. Um, so now I'm, I'm pretty much committed. Since the second omen is almost dead, I decided to go ahead and finish him off before removing the Dragoon, uh, which has me scrammed here. So I'll, while I'm killing the omen, I decided to go ahead and put drones on the Dragoon just to kind of weaken him a little bit. And once the omen goes down, then I go ahead and turn my torpedoes over to this Dragoon, and then he gets one shot off the field, and I'm able to escape. So as you can see, even... You know, with the Blackbird and ECM drones, I never get jammed through the fight. Uh, you know, it's not maybe the tankiest battleship, but it can still hold its own against a group with Lodgy and Ewar. This next fight is a short fight to show how good the application is on the Navy Raven. In this fight, I wasn't any, in any real danger, but it's a great example of how well torpedoes can apply when you fit for it. Like I mentioned earlier, with Crash Booster, it only takes two or three shots to kill an Afterburner Fit Dramiel. The thing that makes this fight even more amusing is that they brought a Logic Cruiser with them to try and rep the Dramiel, not realizing how well t my torpedoes would apply. Seeing the Dramiel go down, the Executioner tries to bail out, but he gets tackled before he has a chance to escape and dies just as quickly. This is a great example of how to work around torpedoes, or some of the torpedoes' drawbacks, and get excellent applica application without having to resort to rapid heavy missiles or long reload times. So the next battleship I'd like to talk about is the Scorpion Navy issue. It's often overlooked for a lot of things, especially in comparison to the Rattlesnake. H however, looking at it as a missile ship and not a drone ship like the Rattlesnake, it still has quite a few good things going for it. One, 
it's not a rattlesnake, so people have no idea what you're doing with it, potentially limiting what kind of gang response you get. It has 8 mids and 5 lows, so you get a lot of flexibility out of it. 8 mids allow you to field several application mods, as well as an actual active tank. The Scorpion Navy issue, Rattlesnake, and the Golem are really the only torpedo battleships I've found that can field a semi-effective active tank. It also has 14,000 raw shield hit points. Only the Rattlesnake has more base shield hit points. Combined with a shield resist bonus, it gives it a solid uh, effective hit points and buffer to work with. For comparison, my whole tank Navy Raven only has about 7,000 more uh, EHP and it's strictly buffer tanked. Whereas the Navy Scorpion is active tanked along with a very comparable buffer. So again, it's very uh, good for kind of blocking alpha and things like that. Uh, the last thing is, is it has 36 sensor strength. It's the highest base sensor strength of any of the Navy battleships, though it is tied with the pirate battleships, uh, the Nestor and the Rattlesnake. It won't make you immune to jams, but it will still help at least, you know, get some of the cheap fit griffins from perma jamming you. Um, normally I see around 24 to 26 points of sensor strength is when ECM starts to be a little bit spotty. So, you know, at 36, you're still going to get jammed, but hopefully it'll cut down on some of the, the bullshit cheap fit griffin fits perma jamming you. So those are the main benefits of the Navy Scorpion. One absolutely glaring issue with it is that it has 93mm scan resolution, which is lower than a NAG or a, a lot of other dreadnoughts, and even on par with some carriers. The Rogue also suffers from this SIG resolution as well, and it's ridiculous to have them on a battleship. As I pointed out before, all battleships really need a scan resolution bump to help distance themselves from capitals. Not to mention making the whole ship line a little more fluid and not so slow and boggy. The other issue that it's got is it's fairly low power grid. That could be somewhat due to torpedoes, but with torpedoes it struggles to util utilize the utility high. So fixing the scan resolution and adding, you know, one or two thousand more power grid fitting would help bring the shi this ship out of obscurity, as it's a really good navy ship, but rattlesnakes being so cheap, it tends to overshadow it. The first fight with the navy scorpion happened while I was roaming Nullsec, and jumped across to Proteus. So instead of leaving system, I bounced back and forth to each of the gates at 100 kilometers to make it look like I didn't want to fight them and was just scouting for my chance to run away. By doing this, I baited the Proteus to land on top of me, allowing me to bait on my own conditions. The first Proteus puts ECM drones on me. Thankfully, I don't get jammed, but you can see how long it takes to even lock up drones due to the Scorpion Navy issue's abysmal scan resolution. It takes about 30 seconds just to lock up the drones. And by the time I'm even able to lock him, he's pretty much already dead anyway. Then, before I knew it, you know, again, the, the I was pretty much already through the Proteus's tank. Uh, these were not overly pimp fit Proteus. By the time the first died, the second one lands on grid, and I'm able to tackle him the same way to the, pretty much the same effect. So even though the Scorpion Navy issue doesn't have any application bonuses, it has a great slot layout to take advantage of adding in a couple application mods without sacrificing all of your tank. And I think this fight is a good example of just a buffer of the Scorpion Navy issue, like I was talking about earlier, fighting these two Proteus, I, I barely even had to pulse my shield booster. I mean, granted, they weren't the greatest of fits, but together, I would say they were probably doing about, you know, 1,200, maybe 1,000 DPS um, if they were both on grid at the same time. You know, fortunately, I was able to split them. Uh, so that definitely helped out there. But even then, if they were both on top of me, I still think I would have been able to get through them pretty easily. And just... You know, in general, I think Proteus have gotten a lot weaker since the rebalance changes. The only ones you're really going to have an issue with with torpedo fits is the rail fits or ones that like to scram kite. Now, this next fight with the Navy Scorpion, uh, again, starts off with me roaming around Knoll into uh, Chaos Theory space. I actually ran across a, a mock on the gate. And initially, when I had warped in, I had warped at 100, and he had micro-jump-drived out. And I don't know if this is a bug, or 
Maybe it, my graphic setting got changed, but I didn't see any guns on him, so I thought he was just a smart bomb fit. So I warp back to the gate that he's on, expecting him to micro jump again. I was going to try and micro jump with him to catch him, but he ended up scramming me, so I jumped through, to which there's a nightmare and a saber waiting for me on the other side. And I've actually been wanting to find a nightmare for a long time in my torpedo battleships because, you know, I'm curious to see how well I apply with them having an afterburner bonus and things like that. Um, so it starts out where the nightmare basically just rams me, uh, which is really good for me as my grappler basically negates his afterburner bonus. Uh, now the one thing I, I do mess up here a little bit in the beginning is that I run my, or I actually inject my 3200 cap boost right in the beginning of the fight, which isn't a big deal right now. It actually kind of compensates for the double heavy nudes that the nightmare put on me, uh, but it becomes an issue later on in the fight. And at this point, obviously, the Nightmare actually starts to break, but now the Mercurial has joined him back, and he, they're now they're both putting Heavy Newts on me and doing a lot of damage. My tank, you know, can tank about 1500 DPS under the best of conditions, and right now it's really being put to the test between these two ships. I mean, the Nightmare alone is probably doing about 1000. So, you know, obviously, again, my, my tank is breaking, and I am basically doing everything I can to put DPS on this Nightmare, and at the last moment, right before my tank fully breaks, I'm able to to kill the Nightmare. Uh, so now, unfortunately, I get jammed by ECM drones, so I have to kind of wait a little bit to to relock this Mercurial. Uh, in the meantime, though, I'm just trying to top off my tank, and get my cat back up, and then right as I start to lock the Mercurial again, I switch ammo to Scourge, because I just have a sneaking suspicion he's armor fit. Um, and then I, I start applying to him, and at this point I'm actually really excited because I've gotten DPS off the field, my tank is recovering, there's no one else here that's really a, a threat to me yet, and so then I start applying damage, and things are looking like it's going to continue to be a really good fight. And uh, so we just kind of duke it out here for a little bit. And it looked like he was starting to break, but then he starts recovering, so he's probably heating at this point, or he has a reactive armor hardener, and I'm just doing less damage because of, uh, you know, missiles. So now, I look and realize I'm out of cat boosters. So I'm, I'm pretty much screwed at this point. And the one big mistake I make here is that I don't switch to my ECM drones. You know, it's, they were only EC300s, but maybe since like he's getting off on me here, maybe I would have gotten lucky as well and gotten a jam off and would have been able to escape that way. Regardless though, it was still a really good fight. You know, I only lost, uh, I lost a 600 million Scorpion Navy issue and they lost a 1.2 billion ISK Nightmare. Moving on to a new addition to my Torpedo Battleship stable, the Barguest. The Barkas is just a better fleet typhoon in almost every way, except for costs and raw potential DPS. This is mainly due to the fleet typhoon fielding five heavy drones, uh, but as far as the missile portion goes, the Barkas has a much higher volley damage at about 8200 with faction, and 10,000 with rage, and using a 5% uh, damage booster. Uh, it also has slightly better fitting, so it can fit one heavy newt and one medium newt, as compared to the Typhoon Fleet issues, one heavy newt and one small newt. It also has six mids, which means that we can use dual uh, missile computers instead of just one compared to the Typhoon Fleet. Uh, and its tank is also, I'd say, better, not by much, probably by you know a few thousand EHP, but you know it's still better, obviously. <laughs> It also has a useful secondary bonus, which is long scrams. This can be useful as your tackle is extended and can potentially screen some interceptors as they try to dive in to scram you and run away. Uh, a good example of this is when you're trying to micro jump drive and they see you do that, they'll try and dive in and get you. If you're anticipating it, you can overheat scram, stop them, newt them, and that might buy you a little bit of time to actually have that micro jump engage without them scramming you and disrupting the cycle. One thing that makes the Torpedo Barges fun to fly is that everyone thinks that you're kiting with rapid heavy missiles. I've had the most success just sitting at 100 kilometers off a gate and waiting for someone who thinks they're being sneaky decloak next to me and, and try catching me. The real game being played though is that I'm catching them and I don't need to chase them around. 
This allows me to find the bar guest a little bit more conservatively, as a lot of people who see a bar guest being flown aggressively, they may hesitate or not want to engage. But if you kind of bounce around and make it look like you're just kind of looking around, or maybe pretend to be dumb and just sit on a particular location, then they'll think they have the advantage and they'll decloak next to you, at which point that's exactly where I want them, and you know, I'll be able to apply all my damage effortlessly. This next fight is a good example of that of that kind of scenario. I was warping through low sec and found a Proteus on a gate, so I ended up warping around and just kind of landing back on this gate at 100 kilometers. And you know, after a few minutes, he ended up decloaking next to me, which I, uh, the the benefit is that he also took gate guns doing this, so that was uh, even more damage on top of him. But now I'm doing, you know, now that he's fully grappled and right next to me. I'm hitting him for about 3,000 damage with every volley, and this is a dead space fit uh, plated plus one rep uh, Proteus. So I mean, I, I pretty much completely devastate his tank before he even gets through my shield, and that's not even my main take tank in this scenario. So it's about a billion isk fit that goes down pretty much effortlessly, and my torpedo alpha just completely negates whatever repping power he had through that armor rep. Uh, he also dropped two geckos, which I ended up coming back and grabbing later. But, you know, again, it's just, it's an effective way to use a bar gas. Instead of just trying to kite, you just bait them out and it works just as well. Now, this next fight, I was roaming through Knoll and I actually came across a, a Harbinger. And so I went ahead and instead of engaging him on the gate, I bounced to a celestial or a planet, at which point they followed me. And once I engaged the first one, then it looks like the rest of his gang ended up jumping through. And with torpedoes, fighting against battle cruisers is really the perfect scenario. Uh, I mean, their signatures is large, so they're it's easily to, to easy to apply full damage to them. Um, you know, they're slow, so it's hard for them to escape. So the first Harbinger goes down, just in time for his uh, backup to arrive. He lands, uh, I think, about eight, 8 or 9 kilometers away, at which point I'm able to still engage him, and thanks to the long range of the scram on the, the Barges, I'm able to hold him, and, and then I overheat it uh, as he's approaching the cold limit, and I'm able to bring him down pretty quickly as well with the torpedoes. Uh, they have a retribution that's just kind of, you know, orbiting me right now. I'm not too worried about him. I'm mainly just wanting to kill as much as I can before I have to get out. Um, at which point they bring in a vagabond. And the nice thing here is that the, uh, I think the the pilot might have made a mistake, but uh, I think they turned their micro warp drive on and then they just sat still. <laughs> so I, I didn't even have them tackled, but because they're sitting still with a bloom sig then I was able to two-shot that Vagabond because it just wasn't moving at all. At this point I decided to go ahead and leave just because there's more jumping through, there's another Harbinger on scan, and I'm pretty much clear at that point. And then the last fight I'm going to show f for this video here is uh, of my Typhoon Fleet issue. You guys have seen this one before. Uh, I'm familiar with the fit, but Again, I kind of did the same thing I've been doing with the Barges and was kind of baiting out a T3 and a, and a uh, belt, just pretending I was a rider. And I had these two T3s decloaked next to me. Uh, I was able to get the Legion tackled. And, you know, thanks to the high damage of the, the of just the Torpedo Alpha and then the additional drone DPS, I was able to kill him pretty easily. Um, unfortunately, the other T3, the Proteus, saw that his you know friend was dying very quickly and decided to bail. So I wasn't able to get him at the same time, but you know it was still it was a I think it was a 1.5 billion isk legion, and he died really quickly to torpedo. So a lot of my torpedo fits, I've pretty much made them as anti T3 ships. So I think it's a really good weapon system to kill him with. And I'd say that pretty much does it for this video. I was trying to keep it short, um, just a lot of information here, and I didn't want to bog you guys down with a bunch of different fights, so I was trying to keep it short to most of the ships. 
Unfortunately, some of the really good fights I had with the Bargas were not recorded, uh, where I, I soloed a Panther that got dropped on me. Um, you might have seen that on Reddit and the uh, After Action Report posted a, a month or so ago. But if you like these videos, you know, just let me know. I, I think I might do a, an alteration or uh, alternate between doing commentary videos and then just doing my simpler videos. As right now, I've actually got kind of a backlog of footage. So I might just pump out a couple of simple videos with no commentary as they're pretty quick for me to make. Whereas a commentary take me a little bit longer to set up. Uh, but let me know what you think of it. If you want to do, if you want to hear more commentary, if you know there's something else you want to add to these videos. Uh, but thanks for watching.